Alright guys, this video will demo the UAC rig, which stands for the Ultimate Adjustable Car Rig. This is based on my previous car rig, but it takes it to a whole new level. I want to thank everyone who sent me feedback and feature requests. This new UAC rig is my response to all of those amazing requests. So if you ask for it, you will indeed find it here. This product is awesome. You're going to love it. So let's take a look at the UAC rig and see what it can do. To install it, just place the UAC rig folder anywhere on your hard drive and then drag the install.mel file into any viewport. You'll see an icon appear on your active shelf and that's it, installed. Easy peasy. To uninstall, just right click and hit remove. This is not a plugin, it's just a simple user interface to help you connect your car model to the rig and also add your own curves to the built-in path system. Before I hit this button, I'm going to quickly go over the folder contents. We have textures of various resolutions for the included chassis model. They are located here. This tool folder contains the Python code used for this tool along with the icons. This PDF is a tidy little document that explains each button on the UI. It also lists all the controls and their attributes. It's pretty handy. There are two Maya scene files and they work in any version of Maya. These files are identical in every way except for one difference. The light version does not contain any tire deformation, which results in a lighter rig. This is a change list. This gives you all the details on any future and previous updates. And finally, we have the license agreement. So let's hit that button and see what happens. This is the setup user interface. This happy little button here will take you to the UAC rig webpage. This long button across the top will connect your selected car to the UI only if you have more than one in the scene. Otherwise, it is automatic and you can ignore it. The rest of the buttons are disabled until you reference, load, or import the UAC rig into the scene. The LT button here on the left, that will tell Maya to load the light version I mentioned earlier, the one with no tire deformation. For this video, I will be using the regular version, so I'll make sure the LT button is turned off and I will hit load. When we load the UAC rig, we are in setup mode. These three arrow controls are the master dimension controls that will allow you to quickly resize the rig to your own vehicle model. As I move them, we see the chassis resize. I'm going to turn off the chassis model for now with this button and bring in a car model for us to set up. I will be creating lots of setup videos for a variety of different vehicles but in this video, I will be adding a red mini to the rig. I purchased this model from Sketchfab and it was created by someone who goes by the name of Stecky. I'll put a link to this model in the description. So let's bring it in and take a look at it. I did load this already to repath the textures, but that's all I have done to it. The setup process is extremely simple and fast and we also have these camera shortcuts to make it fly by even faster. So I'm going to import that car, and it comes in pretty small. So make sure you scale your car to the rig, or you can scale the rig to the car using the global scale attribute on the root control. Make sure your car is facing the positive Z axis with the wheels touching the floor. Snap the green arrow to the center of your front wheel. Do the same thing with the red arrow and snap that to the center of your rear wheel. Select both arrows now in a front view and move them to just outside the tire. Now we adjust the tire width attribute so the display ring is also just outside the tire. A general rule, none of the display rings should intersect the tire. Go to a side view we're going to adjust the tire wall attribute so the display ring sits slightly outside your rim. Steering wheels come in many different designs, so models rarely have a vertex on the perfect center point. So there's a little trick we can do that will also work for wheels if you're having a hard time finding a center point on those two. All you do is duplicate the mesh that needs the center point. Select a radial poly loop on the duplicate by highlighting two polys in the direction of the loop and just double clicking one of them. Extract it with Edit Mesh Extract. Delete the rest of the duplicated mesh and fill the mesh using Mesh Fill Hole. 
Now select one of the new polygons that appear and we're going to use the most wonderfully named tool in the history of all tools, the poke tool. So go to edit mesh and give it a good poke. Now we can snap our steering wheel to the new poke point and delete the duplicate mesh. Once that's snapped in place, just head to a side view and let's tilt the steering wheel control to match the steering wheel model as close as possible. The resize is done. Let's connect the car to the rig. This middle row of buttons here will connect your mesh. Simply match your pieces to the correct car part. If you toggle this little button on the left, you'll switch the method used to connect your mesh. There are three methods. We have skin, constraint, and parent. Each of these methods come with their own pros and cons, so choose the method that best suits your needs. The skin method will impact your viewport performance if your model has a high poly count. On the plus side, you will gain the ability to export a clean skeletal animation in the FBX format. This method works even better if you combine your car into fewer pieces. If you need to export an Alembic cache, you would use the constraint method. This method also works better if you combine the car into fewer pieces. It creates fewer constraint connections, but do keep in mind that you need to keep your wheels and calipers separated with this method. If your car is staying in Maya for your final renders, use the parent method. This offers the best performance of the three, but you lose the ability to export the animation intact. You will also need to keep your wheels and calipers separated with this method. If you want your tires to deform, you must use the skin method. If you don't want tire deformation, just mark your tires as a wheel. If you make a mistake or you want to switch methods, you can just select a different method or car part to change its connection or remove the connection with the red X button. Oh, one more thing before I connect. I just noticed the tires are a little bit on the simple side. You'll need to add a few edge loops in if you have tires that look like these. So go to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, and let's add a loop in the center and one either side. So let's do that for each tire. Again, one in the middle and one either side. And again, middle, either side, and the last one, middle, either side. For this example, I'm staying in Maya, so I'm going to use the parent method for the body, calipers, and wheels, and I will use the skin method for the tires because I want to use the tire deformation. To make things a little more efficient, I'm going to combine the four tires into one piece with mesh combine. There are quite a few pieces, and I would recommend organizing and naming them, but it is certainly not required. You can attach your mesh individually, or we can attach groups of mesh. So let's take a closer look at these wheels. We do have calipers, but they are merged to the rotors. We will need to split those off, or the calipers will spin when the wheels rotate. We don't want that. So let's select those and separate them. Go to Mesh Separate, and now everything else looks good to go. Now I like to hide the top node when I connect mesh to the rig. It makes things a little easier if you have lots of pieces. Now just start selecting your body pieces and hit the body button. The pieces will disappear because we hit the top node. And now we can easily see what we have left to go. Now that's the body done. Grab the steering wheel, hit the steering wheel button, rims and rotors. Actually, you know what? This is a situation where organizing or naming would have probably helped us. So let me grab everything and deselect the tires and calipers. Now we have our wheel pieces and we can hit the wheel button. Grab the calipers, hit the caliper button, Finally, switch to skin mode and we can connect the tires. When all your mesh has disappeared, clean out all those empty groups and unhide the top node. Congratulations, you have just rigged your vehicle. This Mini can now use every feature built into the rig. Let's see what we can do with it. If we grab the root control, we can move, rotate, or scale our car. 
We have this curve path section here that will turn on the curve path. We'll come back to that. We have this display section, which will display various parts of the rig. So this control type attribute will switch it to animation mode, exactly the same as this one will here. They're actually linked, so if we switch the setup, it will switch the control type. We'll leave that on animation mode. The show proxy attribute is toggled by this button as well, and that will show this lightweight little mesh here, which is perfect for animating with. You get an almost real-time response from this, especially with the dynamics, so it's very useful to use this. We have the show chassis attribute here, and that will show the chassis underneath, which does the same thing as our chassis button, which toggles that attribute. We can show the curve path, which is related to this stuff. Uh, we can show the tuner control, which is this one here, that deals with all of your alignment controls. And the steering wheel, we can turn that off here as well, just showing up in there. So let's turn that off. Let's grab the drive control. This control will allow us to move and rotate as well, but the translate Z will move the wheels. These wheels move based on the distance traveled on the z-axis. So if we rotate any direction, we will still see that correct wheel rotation. And this does not use an expression like it did before in the previous version. It uses a neat little utility node setup. I think there's maybe four or five nodes involved. It's a lot more efficient and a little bit more accurate as well. So let's reset that. When we steer our car, we see that the distance is also updated in the wheel rotation in that small distance that it travels as it spins. We also notice the steering wheel is rotating as well. We can also grab the steering wheel control, let me just hide the glass, and rotate the steering wheel. It's a two-way control, so we can turn it that way as well. The steering wheel ratio attribute here will allow us to change the relationship between the steering wheel and the steering. So if we increase this, to say 12, it will become less sensitive and more like a real steering wheel. All right, so you can adjust that number there if you need to. We have an oversteer attribute that allows the car to slide back and forth and try to keep the traction facing the direction of our drive control. You can adjust the amount of traction with this attribute down here, the oversteer traction. We can turn that down or even turn it off. So if we oversteer, the wheels are locked in place. They're not steering. We also have an understeer, which is very similar to the oversteer. You have the front wheels trying to align themselves to the drive control as well. And we can also adjust the traction with the understeer traction right here. We have a forward tip. If you go into the negative, it will tip backwards. And we have a side tip. We have a front wheel spin, which is both of the front wheels spinning together, and a rear wheel spin. You can see that they're both spinning there. The curve path attributes are here, which we'll go over a bit later, and we've already touched on those. Let's take a look at the wheel control. The wheel control can move up and down, and you'll see that it will adjust the body rotation. You can change the amount the body is influenced by that with this down here. Under the chassis influence section, we have a from wheel control. If we set that to zero, when we move that up and down, the body doesn't move anymore. So you can play with those values. We have the tire pressure attribute which is one of the coolest attributes on this rig. And that will allow you to lower the tire pressure of your wheels. I'm gonna smooth that so we get a better result. And you are able to drive it in this state. So we can move the car and the tire will be deflated. Now this setting is per wheel, so we can deflate this tire as well. And we can also deflate the rear ones individually as well. In addition to that, we can adjust the tire bulge by playing with that attribute there. So if you want it to bulge out a little bit more, you can do so. 
And at the bottom here, we have this from tire pressure attribute, which is under the chassis influence. So if we drop that to nothing, when we have our tire pressure adjusted, the body does not move. If we set it back to how it was, when we adjust that tire pressure, the body moves up and down with it. We have a wheel spin attribute, and this is an independent wheel spin just for this wheel. And we have a drive spin multiplier. Now what this does is it will multiply the sum of all rotations applied to this wheel. So if we set this to say three, you're gonna get a slippery road kind of effect where there's no traction. It's just gonna spin three times as fast as it would normally. Set that back to one. You can also change your alignment with this control. You can change your camber. Now this will also affect the body and you can change how it affects it down here. If we turn that off, the camber attribute won't affect the body. And we also have a toe attribute here as well. So let's take a look at the body control. So the body control can move up and down. You can also rotate on the Z axis and the X axis. You may notice that the wheels were moving when I uh, adjusted that body and you can adjust the amount those wheels move with two tire pressure and two camber. So if we move that down, you'll notice that the tires are deforming from the weight of whatever's pushing the car down. We can enhance that. And we can also have it affect the camber. So let's pump that up a little bit, maybe to 10. And you'll see those wheels tilting. We have a dynamic attribute. And if you turn that on, you have a little control that shows up. And this will allow you to control and play with the dynamics. I'm going to turn that off for now. We'll come back to that. These attributes here are the noise control. This just adds a ambient noise to the body motion. It can be pretty handy to put on in small amounts. So if I turn on the proxy mode, we'll be able to see that playing in near real time. So let's turn that on and you get this sort of swaying motion that you can speed up or offset. We also have a shake control. Now these add a repetitive wave motion to the car. Now these are very useful to create an engine effect, an engine noise. So if we turn those on and just hit play, you get that engine rattle motion. And this is totally customizable. You can play with it however you want. We can adjust the up and down amount, turn them right down. If we just want side, we could turn those two off. Now it's just gonna sway to the side. If you wanna enhance the side, just turn that to five and it will just be side motion. We can change the speed of it. If we want that to go really fast, so you can just change these values and come up with your own motion pretty quickly. So that's the body control. Let's take a look at the tuner control. Now this control will allow you to change your alignment. The first attribute here is Ackerman influence. It's set to one right now, which is 100% Ackerman. You could play with that if you want to. And what that is, is a little attribute that will allow you to adjust the rate at which your two front wheels will steer. So in Ackerman steering, the inside wheel, whichever way you're turning, will always turn at a faster rate than the outside. And if you drew a line from the center point straight out from each wheel, they would converge at a point on the rear axle. Now what does that all mean? If you don't really know what it is, I wouldn't worry about it. It would just allow you to add a little bit of realism to your car if you knew the Ackerman percentage of your vehicle. You could just put that in there and you'll get the steering just react just that little bit differently. It doesn't actually stop your car slipping like it would in the real world. This just gives the illusion of Ackerman. If you turn it all the way off, you'll just get parallel steering so that the wheels will just be turning at the exact same rate. So let's go back to our mini and I'm gonna show you the caster attribute. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna show this on the chassis model. So let me show you what's going on there. So I'm going to turn off this mini. I'm just going to hide it. And let's unhide the chassis.
And what the caster attribute does is it will change the way your steering is mounted. It will shift it over and cause the knuckle to tilt in what's called a caster angle. And we can set that to something like six, like six degrees. And what will happen is when we steer our car, if we go into all the moving parts here, when we steer this, we're getting an angle to the wheel. So if we go on the outside of the wheel here, we'll be able to see it. And this results in a more realistic approach to steering when you're talking about CG. So we get that actual angle that you would get on your real car. So if you go and steer your car and just take a look at that angle, you'll notice it is not flush, it's not perfect and straight like it would be like this. There is an angle to it. And the other thing that will happen here is because we have a tire deformation set up, it will in fact squeeze the tire as well. So if we steer that again, maybe I'll just use this, it's right there. If we steer that again, we can see that it grinds into the ground. So it's a very neat setting and I do recommend using that one. It's pretty cool. Just to add that realistic angle to your steering. We also have front and rear camber here. This is where I'd recommend setting your initial camber. So if you actually want a camber setting on your car, do it here. The other attributes on the wheels are more for animating camber if you wanted to. Front toe and rear toe here as well. And also adjust the ride height. So we can shift that up and down. You won't notice it on the chassis, but if we go back to the Mini, it will lift up your vehicle. So let's turn off that chassis and go to the right height attribute and move it up and down and it will allow you to move your the body up and down. So that's all of the controls. Let's go over the path system and how you can add your own paths. Let's select the root control and activate the curve path system. So the curve path attribute is just a drop down. There are six preset curves here. We have straight, so we zoom out here. We have a straight curve that you can modify and adjust however you want to. We have a weave path, bend, loop, spiral, and an oval. Now all of these curves can be scaled. You can just scale them with this attribute. This is independent from the global scale. The global scale just affects the car. The curve scale affects just the curve. If you want to scale them both together, just select both and they will scale at the same rate. Now, if we go to the drive control, we have the attribute path drive. I'm just gonna set it to a different curve here. I'm just gonna use the weave one. So if we drive the car using the path drive attribute, this attribute goes from zero to 100, and it represents the percentage of the path covered. So if we go to like 50% here, we'll be halfway down the curve. Let's just reverse here for a moment. We can see this automatic steering. So as we drive, we can see those wheels turning to follow the path. This automatic steering can be amplified or turned off and you can add your own steering in at any time. This is just a neat little feature that will speed you up considerably if you're just doing some simple driving scenes. We have a path spin attribute here as well, which I skipped past, and that just tilts your car on the path. This auto steer distance, there is a tracking point on this curve, 50 units in front of the car. So it uses that to prepare the car for steering. So that's what activates that automatic steering. So you can adjust the distance with this. So if you wanna add your own curve path, it's very easy to do. Just open up the UI and create a curve of some kind, however you wanna create your curve. And we just hit add selected curve path and that's it. Now I do recommend naming your curve because it will show up in the drop down list here as curve one because we didn't name it. So if you want to remove it, because that one is the active curve, we can just hit remove active curve path. And a copy of it will always be here 
hidden just in case you need to add it again. So if we wanted to rename this now and call it, I don't know, hook. And maybe this time we wanted to start on the opposite side of the curve. We can hit reverse and just add it. So now we're going to start on the opposite side and it's going to be named hook listed here. So it's very easy to add your own paths. You can add multiple paths if you need to at one time. So we can just create a whole bunch here. Just select them all and just hit add. And they will appear in this drop down. So if you want to remove all of the ones that you've created, you can just hit remove all curve paths. A little prompt will pop up and tell you that you're going to be removing all these. You're sure? Hit yes. And now every one of those curve paths we added will be gone. You cannot remove the presets, they will always stay, but you can always add or remove your own curves. Again, we had copies kept in case you want to add them again. So this keep position button, what that does is it will move your car to the start of the curve, which is what we saw just now. If we turn that off, the opposite happens. The curve will come to the car. So if we just delete these curves, and I'll draw another curve, what's going to happen is this curve will pop to the car. So if I select this and hit add, it's going to come to the car. The car rotated there because the angle of the curve was that way, but it moved to the car's position. The car is still set to zero, zero, zero. All right, so you probably won't need to turn off keep position, but if you do and you want to do it that way around, you can. Most of the time you're going to need keep position turned on because your curves are going to be part of your environment and you're not going to want them to move around. You can edit these on the fly and they will not flip the car or do any weird stuff. So if we drive down the path a little bit here, start playing with this curve, we're not going to be able to flip this car around. It's going to always stay where you would expect it to stay. All right, so this path system is very, very stable. It's awesome. So let's remove that path. There is one more way we can add a curve and that is using geometry. So we can use an edge loop. So let's just create a polyplane here. I'm just gonna create a quick mock-up hill and show you what I mean. So let's grab some points and uh, hit proportional and just create a hill. There we go. Good enough. So let's take one of these edge loops and you know what we're going to do first actually is name this. We're going to call it hill. Now we take the edge loop and we can just say add selected curve path. Now we're going in reverse because I want us to drive down the hill. We need to select the edge loop with reverse turned on or we can just select the new generated curve and reverse it. So let's remove the curve path and then select our new curve with reverse and just hit add curve. So now we're on top of this hill and with our drive control, we can drive down this curve. I'm gonna close that for now because we don't need it anymore. And we can drive down this path and you will notice we started at 22.1% of the path. And that's because you can switch through those paths and you will start at the same point. Let's just quickly show you that. So if I switch between different paths, we will be at the 22.1% mark. So if you animate this, you can actually switch paths afterwards and the animation will stay per path, which is interesting. It might not match up with your path, but you can carry it over. Let's go back to our new curve. Now if we wanted to animate this, we can use the dynamics with this. So this is a good opportunity to show you some dynamics as well. So let's keyframe it at the top of the hill. Let's go to zero, we'll have it come down. Let's key it. We'll drive down in maybe two seconds. We'll come down to say here and we'll stop. There we go. So this animation is going to be pretty short, but you'll get an idea of what's going on. So if we hit play, it's going to be fairly slow because we're using our full rig is on the screen, especially the tire deformation system. It does slow everything down a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our proxy mode. So as soon as we turn on proxy and we hit play, it's going to be a lot faster. 
So the animation itself is actually pretty slow. So we're going to speed that up a little bit. Maybe a little bit too fast. Right, now let's turn on the dynamics. Now the dynamic system works very well with the path system. It's almost automatic actually, it's pretty neat. So let's turn it on and we get this control. Don't worry about the car getting crazy there for a second. When we set it back to frame one, it will return to its normal position. As soon as you turn it on, we can see it working. Now we can adjust this using the arrow control here, this white arrow control. We can change the sensitivity, which is the speed in which it recovers. So if we set to one, it's gonna take a very long time to recover from the bounciness. It's gonna be a very loose suspension. It's gonna be bouncing for a long time. If we set it to say 0.5, it's gonna be a lot tighter. And obviously if we set it like 0.2, we'll barely notice it. It'll just be so tight, it'll just spring back so quick. But we can enhance it here with the influence. So if we set this to something like 10 with a low sensitivity, you will see it. It just will spring back very, very quickly. So let's set it to something a bit more reasonable. Let's go to 0.5. This is gonna be very crazy. So let's bring that back down to uh, something like one. And we can adjust the individual axes of this too. So the up and down motion, the forward tilt, and the side tilt. There's not much side tilt here, I don't think, because actually there's none, because this is dead straight. So if I actually move this path and create some swerve here for our car, when we drive, we're gonna get a side tilt as well. See that? So as we come down, we can get that motion going, which is very cool. All right, so I'm pretty happy with this animation. If you want to see this on the Mini, we can just turn off proxy mode, and we'll be uh, back at the Mini. So we can hit play with the Mini. If you play blasted this, you would get a very good result. But what I'm going to do right now is bake it. So let me show you how to bake your animation down. The rig comes in a very tidy little package just like the previous version. You can just bake down this one skeleton and just pull it from the rig and delete the rig and you're good to go to export. Now this, we did use the parent method so we can't actually export this without skinning it. But what we can do is bake this down right now. So let's go to edit, keys, bake simulation. Let's make sure the options are correct here. We want to make sure the below hierarchy is uh, is set so below hierarchy and then just hit apply so then when we bake this it's going to put keys on all of those joints that's probably good let's escape that there we go so we can take the root out of here and along with our geometry we can unparent and we can just delete the entire rig now it doesn't we don't need it and when we hit play we get this nice animation that is joint based so that takes us to the end of this video grab the uac rig from my online store if you want to create professional vehicle animations on your car models quickly and efficiently you will absolutely love it if you have any issues or notice any bugs please let me know and i will put out an update as soon as possible thanks for watching